Hello and welcome to this mini gem from the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name's Helen Chamberlain and I'm going to help you re respond to the common request from the wards for fluids, please. What we're going to cover is how to assess an older person for fluids, what to give for resuscitation and maintenance, how to administer it and to consider when it is and is not appropriate. First, Let's think how the body changes with age with respect to fluid balance. Aging kidneys have fewer nephrons, so they can't filter large volumes and concentrate urine as easily as when they were younger. Older people's vasculature is less elastic and so cannot respond as quickly to large volume changes. Many older people are on diuretics or other drugs that affect the renin angiotensin system and this will also affect their response to fluid challenges. Finally, by definition, frail older people have little physiological reserve and the kidneys are particularly affected by this. The net result is that maintaining a careful balance between giving too much fluid and not enough can be hard. You need to consider the clinical status of the patient as well as the fluid balance chart and the blood results. A very general rule of thumb, however, is that it is easier to see when too much fluid has been given and correct that than when too little has been given and the patient has acute kidney injury. The first thing to consider when you are asked to write up fluids is whether the patient is fluid depleted and needs resuscitation. Use the ABCDE approach and look for signs like tachycardia or cool peripheries. If the patient can stand up, postural hypotension, that's a 20 millimetre drop in systolic blood pressure, is a very sensitive sign for volume depletion. If you detect hypovolemia, ask yourself what fluid has been lost. Is it a pure water loss, such as poor intake or increased losses due to fever or tachypnea? Is it blood loss due to hemorrhage or trauma? Or is the loss mostly from the GI tract due to diarrhoea, vomiting or both? Knowing the fluid missing then determines what to give to replace it. For blood loss or GI losses, use a balanced fluid such as Hartmann's or Ringer's lactate. For pure water loss, either saline or dextrose can be used, but be careful using large volumes of either. Saline has large amounts of chloride, which can reduce renal perfusion in a hypovolemic patient and cause acidosis. Dextrose solutions can cause hyponatremia, which older people are vulnerable to anyway due to the poor concentrating ability of their kidneys. In initial fluid resuscitation, give a fluid bolus. The NICE guidance suggests 500 mils over 15 minutes, but if, for example, you're treating a 45 kilo old lady with a history of heart failure, it's reasonable to give a smaller volume initially. Send the bloods off, and especially the lactate, which is a sensitive measure of tissue perfusion. Ask the nurses to monitor the fluid balance and consider putting a catheter in to monitor output. Don't forget to look at the drug chart and review the need for drugs such as diuretics, ACE inhibitors or ARBs. After giving the fluid challenge, repeat the MUSE score. Check the urine output too, but it may be slower to respond and you may need to give a second or third bolus. You should repeat the bloods and lactate at this point. If they are responding, continue to replace fluids more slowly until they are replete. The rate at which you replace a fluid depends on how ill the patient is and the rate of any ongoing losses. If they have not responded to two or three boluses, call for help. How do you respond to a request for replacement fluid if resuscitation is not required? First, check that oral fluid replacement is not possible. For example, the patient may be nauseous or vomiting, be ill by mouth awaiting surgery, or have dysphagia, that means oral fluids can't be given. If, however, the patient can swallow, but just needs encouragement or their fluids thickening, discuss this with the nurses first and try to use the oral route. When prescribing maintenance fluids, bear in mind the usual daily requirements for the major electrolytes and water. These are given here per kilo, so can be adjusted for that 45 kilo old lady. If oral intake does not meet daily requirements, then consider giving supplemental fluids. 
The fluid you give for routine replacement should therefore contain the daily requirements plus an allowance for ongoing losses. Saline or dextrose can be used and remember to supplement at least one bag per day with potassium. A large man of about 85 kilos will need 3 litres a day, but the 45 kilo old lady may only need a litre and a half. If low volumes, that's 1 or 2 litres per day, are sufficient for maintenance, then fluids can be given subcutaneously. There is evidence that this is better tolerated in agitated patients, and as it doesn't need an IV cannula, it's easier for ward nurses to give. Most hospitals have a policy of only giving saline subcut and potassium supplemented fluids cannot be given due to the risk of local irritation. Any patient on IV fluids must be reviewed daily and ease must be available to guide fluid replacement. Always prescribe fluids for 24 hours in advance and before a weekend let the on-call teams know they will be called for this and leave the blood forms out to help them. If the patient's going to be on IVs for longer than a few days, then their weight is also useful in assessing their fluid balance. In many frail older people, especially those with dementia, there will come a time when you wonder whether giving supplemental fluids is the right thing to do. There's reduced awareness of thirst at the end of life, and mouth care is probably as important as giving fluids. However, you shouldn't take a drip down until you've had a sensitive discussion with the patient if possible, and certainly with their family, regarding the benefits and burdens of supplemental fluids. There is no right or wrong thing to do here, but remember, for that patient and their family, at the end of life there's only one chance to get their care right. So, I hope you're now a bit clearer about assessing the need for fluids in older people, identifying when fluid resuscitation may be necessary, what, how and when to give maintenance fluids. Do have a read of the NICE guidance on fluids. It's quite short and gives very clear algorithms. There's also a link to a review of subcut fluids and a BMJ learning article on IV fluids, which can go in your learning portfolio. Thanks for listening and do look at the other mini gems on this channel.